This is the OPS Pregame Report. Welcome live to Spartan Arena on the campus of Homestead High School as the 4A number 6 Homestead Spartans are set to play host against the 2A number 2 Blackhawk Christian Braves. I'm Noah Johanningsmeyer, joined alongside Anthony Gary and sideline reporters Noah Lance and Braxton Hall as we get set for a great matchup here tonight as we're about 10 minutes away from tip-off. And Anthony, here tonight we have a showdown between two of the best teams in the area. It's one of the premier matchups in Northeast Indiana, and we get to see it here tonight in Spartan Arena. And it's always special when these two teams get to duke it out on the floor. Homestead and Black Hall Christian have been two of the best teams in Northeast Indiana over the last three years. And Noah, every time these two teams face off, it is bound to be something special. And now let's get into the OPS pregame show as we take a look at the coaches pool, which includes all classes in the state and has both the Spartans and the Braves residing among the top 15 teams in the state. And it's nothing short of impressive to see a small two-way school in Blackhawk Christian ranked among schools with four, five times the population. But it's become an expectation at this point, as well as with Homestead, to be in the coaches' pool every single year. Like I said earlier, two amazing programs that always come together to make an amazing game. Yeah, these two are always highly ranked in the polls and always have a great matchup. And through the years in this matchup, there have been a whole lot of talent in hotly contested games, such as an overtime thriller a year ago and a battle two years ago. And the old Spartan Arena that included three guys now playing Big Ten basketball and Caleb First, Luke Goody, and Fletcher Lawyer. When these two teams hit the hardwood, you can always expect a good one. And it's nothing short of impressive to see how great that this rivalry matchup has been. It may seem like the Spartans dominate this rivalry based on the 7-1 record, but don't be fooled. Every game in the last three years between these two has been decided by 15 or less points besides just one. Right now, Homestead on a four-game winning streak. It looks like they're dominating, but every single game, Blackhawk Christian is in it. And like you said, overtime game last year, Blackhawk Christian, they're on a bit of a revenge tour right now. Yeah, there have been some battles between these two squads, and we expect another one here tonight. And now let's take a look at the Spartans' schedule this year, as they have been near perfect this season outside of a loss to Munster, and they have yet to even play at full strength, as this will be the first time all year we will see the front court duo of Tucker Day and Grant Leeper out on the floor together. And Coach Johnson has to be beyond satisfactory with the way that his team has started this year. 11-1 to start the year with their only loss being at 10 a.m. to the start of the holiday tournament to a Munster team that ran a very impressive defense against the Spartans. Coach Johnson seeing that game as his only loss has to be so impressive. Now with Tucker Day back and all the potential that we know Tucker Day has, two bigs underneath the basket. Grant Leaper shouldn't get into as much foul trouble. The sky is the limit for the Homestead Spartans, and they could very much be state title contenders. And the overall leading force so far this season has been the backcourt of Will Jamison and Kyron Kalpuiki that has shown to be one of the best in the state as each and every game they have stepped up big for the Spartans. And both these guys are so unique in the way they play. Kyron Kalpuiki is a three-point sniper shooting 51.8% from beyond the arc on 87 attempts this year, being the Spartans' leading scorer. And then, of course, you have Will Jamison, who is just such a special player himself. If you need a basket, he's going to go out and get it for you. That 15 to 18 foot jump shot from the mid range is so special, and he is not afraid at all to go up against 6'8 six, six Josh first and 6'8 Kellen Pickett tonight. And these two really are, or really have been leading the way for the Spartans all season long. And as for the visiting Braves here tonight, they have also been near perfect as they have only dropped one game all year. And that one loss came against the 3A number three North Davies in overtime. And it's been near, uh, pretty much a perfect start for Blackhawk Christian. Their only loss was against one of the best teams in the state by just five points in overtime. A great start for Blackhawk Christian. They had what some would consider a little bit of a down year last year, but they went through a lot of emotional stuff in that season and now bouncing back this year with a brand new coach, 12-1, and one, number two in their class. They picked up right where they left off two years ago. Yeah, they have been absolutely dominant all season long. To have your only loss come just five points in overtime, it really shows you are a great squad. And they really are a, a great squad. Just look at these wins. An 11-point win over Northside to start the season. That is another one of the best teams in the area that we'll get to see next Friday. But 
just a great start for Blackhawk Christian. A lot, couple comparisons too. They played really great against Southside the team that Homestead struggled against. Great job for Blackhawk to start the game, the season. But no doubt their biggest matchup comes tonight against Homestead. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely huge for the Blackhawk Christian Braves as they play in or they don't play in a conference. So this matchup is going to be huge. Really the biggest regular season matchup for the Braves all year long. And it really is. Like you said, they don't play in a conference. The SAC is kind of the pinnacle of Fort Wayne basketball and seeing Homestead as the best team allegedly in the SAC conference would pretty much be able to crown themselves as the best team in the area. Blackhawk Christian, obviously, they want the bragging rights. They've lost four in a row against the Spartans, four very close losses, and they want to take one away on the Spartans' home court. And the leaders for this squad have been Gage Sefton, Josh First, and Kellen Pickett, as they all average over double-digit points a game. This has been just such a dynamic trio with two great bigs and a high-scoring guard. They work together as a great team and really just create that triangle dynamic with two big guys that are able to rebound and dominate the post, both averaging 8.5 rebounds per game. And then Gage Sefton, who's able to get the ball right to them. Like you see right there, 6.3 assists per game. They just work so well together as a unit, and it has paid off for Blackhawk Christian so far this year. And as you look at their season highs, you see all of them have gotten over 24 points in a single game this season. And when you have three different guys who can get up to those high numbers, it really makes your team hard to defend overall. And it really does. For Homestead, they don't. it comes down to just the overall team defense that they're going to have to play tonight because you can't just zone in on one player and try to limit him because, like you said, three guys have scored 24 points or more this year. It can be any guy on any given night that goes off and performs for this team. They're such a hard team to defend against because of that matter. And Blackhawk Christian, again, that's been a huge key to their success. And the matchup tonight is going to be fun to watch as well, seeing two bigs go up against two bigs and some great guards go up against some great guards. And now this is going to be the sixth year that a first will be a key, he key piece for the Braves against the Spartans, this time it being Josh First, the younger brother of Caleb First, going up against Grant Leeper and Tucker Day down low. And without a doubt, the name First will go down in Blackhawk Christian history. His older brother, Caleb First, of course, won Mr. Basketball two years ago, won two state titles, would have been three if it wasn't for COVID, with the Braves in his tenure. And he's... Josh First has had big shoes to fill, but he's carried on that legacy really well. Leading the team this year, 12-1, number two in two-way. A real nice shot at a two-way state title coming in March. Like I said, the name First will go down in history. They have just been so good for this Braves program. Something special and something that all Blackhawk fans will remember forever. And now taking a look at the numbers comparison between these two squads, Blackhawk likes to play at a faster pace than the Spartans have been accustomed to scoring a state's 15th best, 68.3. And this should end up being a little bit more favorable to the Spartans tonight. They like to play at a fast pace, but they have just been slowed down most of the time this year by defenses playing a zone. Blackhawk doesn't really like to play a zone that much. They like to play man, man coverage against of their opponents, and this should help the Spartans because that's the matchup that they want. Yeah, they want that matchup. They want that fast-paced energy. That's really what the Blackhawk Christians have been doing all season long. As for the Homestead Spartans, as we've seen in their past couple games, they've really slowed down pace-wise, especially against the Southside Archers and Wawa C in their last two games, scoring 44 and 49 points. And it's going to be interesting to see what Blackhawk does on defense because, like I said, the last... They are used to running a man defense, but teams against Homestead have done a great job running zone and slowing them down. So we'll see if we get a little bit of a taste of a Blackhawk Christian zone tonight. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if the Braves do decide to get into a zone look as that has really been something that has really hurt the Homestead Spartans so far this season. It has hurt the Spartans, but again, it's going to be so interesting to see. And now we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, Noah Lance, who's alongside Coach Chris Johnson. Thanks, Noah. Coach, it's the first time all year long you're going to have both of your bigs in the starting lineup. What do you expect to see out of the Tucker and Leaper tandem tonight? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, we've not had our full lineup all year. You know, finally the lineup that we said we were going to have at the beginning of the year, we're going to see what it's all made of. So hopefully those guys are ready to play. Thanks, Coach, and good luck tonight.
Now we're going to send it over to Braxton Hall, who's with Blackhawk head coach Matt Roth. All right, thanks, Noah. And Coach Roth, this is one of the most anticipated matchups in the area each and every year. What, do you, what does your Braves team need to do tonight to pull off this upset on the Spartans' home court? We just got to stick together, play the game. Uh, we got a great group. They're experienced. They've been in big games. Oh, man, it's it's great for Fort Wayne to have good basketball. All right, so thanks. Fun night. Thanks, Coach, and good luck tonight. Back to you in the booth, Noah. Thank you, Braxton. And now we will be sending it to a short break, but we will be back for Homestead Blackhawk. Oh, baby. That looks amazing. Marcos, pizza lovers get it. Watch out! And he slams it on. Grant Leeper with a step back. Three ball. Swish! Kyron Kalpawiki from downtown again. Houston pulls up and hits. back, open three. It's gone! Todd Curry! One second! The Spartans are state champions! It's over! It's over! The Spartans are state champions! Welcome back to Spartan Arena as we are moments away from a premier showdown in Northeast Indiana. The Blackhawk Christian Braves and the Homestead Spartans. As we are now going to be giving you the starting lineups for each of these squads here. Starting off with a visiting Blackhawk Christian Braves. As you, are, as you see them there with Kellen Pickett, Isaac Smith, Josh First, Jimmy Davidson, and Gage Sefton to round out that starting five. A very tall lineup for the Blackhawk Christian Braves and a very nice unit that they have. Shortest player being Jimmy Davidson at 6'3". A very, very great team. Yeah, they are all around very talented. And now for the Homestead starting five, as this is going to be the first time we see Tucker Day in the starting lineup, he will be along with four usual starters with Will Jamison, Kyron Kapowicki, Grant Leeper, and Alex Raper. Welcome back, Tucker Day. Welcome to the big floor. The lights are dim here for the first time at Spartan Arena. The energy in the building is high, and it's going to be come down to whether or not Tucker Day can provide tonight for the Spartans. He was a great player last year. Of course, he didn't have much of a role on that Homestead team last year, but when he was in for Grant Leaper, for Andrew Leaper, he was beyond serviceable and has a lot to provide for the Homestead Spartans tonight. We'll just have to see how Coach Johnson uses him. Yeah, last year as a sophomore day in two different games, scored double digit points. And now as a junior coming off of an injury for most of the early parts of the season, he's gonna be hungry to get it going here. And Will Jamison, Kyron Kapowiki are going to have to find him that ball. But don't forget about Alex Graber, too. Those other four get a lot of hype, but Alex Graber might be the best defender on this team. The Spartans consistently put him on their best 
put him on the opposing team's best guy. We'll have to see tonight with obviously the best two guys on Blackhawk Christian being 6'6 six, six and 6'8. Six, but I expect Alex Graber to be going up against Gage Sefton, which will be a matchup to watch. And now let's send it down to sideline reporter Noah Lance with some words on former Blackhawk head coach Mark Davidson. Thanks, Noah. And like you just mentioned, today is the first matchup between these two schools since the passing of legendary head coach for the Blackhawk Braves, Mark Davidson. In his tenure, he won 78% of his games and won two state titles. His son right now is on the team as one of the starters, Jimmy Davidson. So his legacy continues to live on here at Blackhawk Christian. Noah, back to you. Thank you, Noah. And what a legacy it is for Coach Davidson as his legacy will live on as his son, Jimmy Davidson, playing for this Brave squad. And overall, Mark Davidson really had a great career as head coach for the squad. He really had a great career. 78% of his games he won as the head coach which is just so special and to see his legacy live on through Jimmy Davidson is just amazing. You know that this season is for him. And now to start off this ball game after the Spartans won the tip, you see Jamison attacking inside. Once again, this is the first time all season long we've seen a full health, a full strength Spartan squad with Tucker Day and alongside Leaper as Day feeds it to Leaper and Leaper finishes. 2-0 early lead for the Spartans. And that's what you love to see if you're Coach Johnson, your big guy feeding your big guy. Tucker Day, you saw he just draw his defender, he drew his defender out of the paint, and it was wide open for Grant Leaper to finish. Yeah, and with high-low action between those two is really something that the Spartans haven't obviously been able to do without Tucker Day all year long. It could be interesting to see that this for the rest of the season. As Kaupuiki couldn't get the finish there, a fight for it ends in a jump ball. And since the Spartans won the tip, it's going to be Braves ball. And an awkward shot there for Kyron Kaupuiki. Took a very contested shot. It looked like he had Will Jamison on the backdoor pass. He faked it to him at first, but the defender not drawn away. Great job by Blackhawk to force this turnover. As Sefton met by a double team of Leaper and Kaupuiki. Now a cross-court pass, 6-8, forward picket, driving inside, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line for two, and that's going to be an early foul on Grant Leaper, who has a history of dealing with foul trouble. He has a big history of dealing with foul trouble, and it was kind of thought that with Tucker Day coming back, he won't be able to get into as much foul trouble, of course, only taking half the load as the big man underneath the basket, but that first foul right there isn't a great sign going up contesting a shot that Tucker Day was already contesting. Yeah, and that might be ca the case on a normal night, but right here tonight, the Spartans are facing off against a 6'8 forward and Pickett and a 6'6 forward slash center and Josh First. And that's going to be a problem for Tucker Day and Grant Leaper all night long, probably the best big that they've played all season. So we'll see how the Spartans manage. They showed a zone on their very first defensive possession, and it led to a foul, but it was pretty contested. Now the Spartans looking for a shot. Jameson pulls the trigger, no good. But a long rebound for Alex Graber. Graber averaging just shy of five rebounds a game on the year. He may only be 6'2", but he is an athletic and strong person underneath the basket, always grabbing rebounds for the Spartans. And then there's Kyron Kapuiki for three. He's a deadly shooter, shooting 52% on the season, and then dropped in that triple for an early 5-1 Spartan lead. Now down low, J Davidson blocked by the Spartans. And it's, this is what you love to see out of a healthy Tucker Day. Just meeting him at the pinnacle of his shot, getting a hand on the ball, and giving the Spartans another possession and a chance to now take a three-possession lead. As the Spartans trying to get the lead up to three possessions, as you just mentioned, with Tucker Day out there. And the Spartan squad early has really gone to the slow pace that we talked about compared to the Braves' fast pace. That's going to be a key to the game in this one, trying to keep at your own pace if you're the Spartans. And for the Braves, you've got to push like you're used to. We'll see if they try to do that, make the Spartans uncomfortable. Both teams looking like they're in man right now, maybe a slight zone for the Spartans. 
As Pickett across to Davidson, almost lost it. Now first double teamed, finds Davidson at the rim and it's an easy two for Jimmy Davidson. It took a little bit of time, but great vision from first on that pass. He got contested, he drew the double team and found the back toward pass to Davidson, wide open layup. Right back and forth early on in this one. Almost halfway through for the first quarter of action now. Jamison on the attack. Just found himself in the air with nothing to do and he turns it over and then picks up a foul. I'm sure Coach Johnson's not happy with a full court foul for Jamison. Maybe just out of frustration. There. That is just a frustration foul. Will Jamison thought he had a man there. He was trying to sell the layup and find the open pass, but first a great job of not taking the bait. And then Will Jamison just makes a dumb mistake and gets his first foul of the game. Now Sefton pressured outside there by Kaupuiki. And then it will be a three-pointer from Smith. No good. But then first with a long rebound. Now in the corner is Pickett. As the Braves slowing it down a little bit on this possession. Once again, this is a team that averages 68 points per game, which is best, which is a state's 15th best. As Pickett pulled the trigger on that three, no good. And then Tucker Day just lets that rebound slip through his hands and go out of bounds. Braves will keep possession. And a collision at the end of that play between Kapowiki and Day, just a miscue by Tucker Day, not able to grab onto that ball. As you see on this replay, that one just bounced back. It looked like it was going right into his hands, just miscommunication. He made the effort to save it, just unable. And then a nice attack of the rim by Gage Sefton draws another foul on a big for the Homestead Spartans. This time it's going to be Tucker Day. And that might be the strategy for Blackhawk Christian in this game. Attack the bigs, get a couple fouls, put a couple fouls on them and make them uncomfortable. So far the foul swing is 3-0 to zero in favor of the Braves. Nice start for Blackhawk in that category. Yeah, they've done a nice job of attacking the rim and drawing fouls on the Spartans early. As Sefton, a 80% shooter on the season, went one for two from the line there. Braves now two for four from the line on the night. As that's going to be the first foul on the Braves of the night there. A little too aggressive trying to strip it away from Kapowiki. That one's going to go on Gage Sefton. His first, he's a 17 point per game shooter for Blackhawk Christian, hasn't had any noise so far in this one, but watch out for him to get active. He takes a lot of shots and just like Will Jamison, likes to try to find ways to score. It's Kapowiki now pulls the trigger on a three and he's blocked. Now we're gonna see Pickett in transition, wide open and slam it in. After a slow start to the Braves where they fell down 5-1, to one, a, qu a quick little 5-0 run to answer back. And now another seal, this time Sefton, and another slam. And that's going to force Coach Chris Johnson of the Spartans to call a timeout as a 7-0 Blackhawk Christian run. Back-to-back -back slams for Blackhawk Christian. And the energy is completely on the right side of the building right now. A 7-0 run for the Braves, and they have every ounce of momentum that they could ever wish for. Yeah, they really started this one off a little slow, only scoring one point in the first couple of minutes, but they have answered back strong. They've gone quickly, and we talked about it just a few moments ago when Gage Sefton was at the line. They've done a nice job of attacking inside, trying to draw fouls on the Spartans' bigs. They did, and again, you see this replay, just a huge slam for Gage Sefton. He got up there 6'4", just slow, throwing it down in front of the Homestead student section. This run right now is very nice for Blackhawk Christian. You were wondering where the scoring was for the Braves, but they've seemed to find it in transition. Yeah, not only have they been aggressive attacking the rim, but they've also been aggressive defensively as we saw them jump the passing lanes. Two straight possessions there. as Graber now challenged outside by Smith. And right there, some high-low action between Day and Leeper again. That time, Leeper couldn't get the finish. We also saw that on the first possession of the game. And once again, this is the first time all year we're seeing those two on the court. So that might be something we'll see 
as a staple for the Somerset Spartans offense the rest of the year. And even when neither player has the ball, even when Grant Leeper doesn't have the ball, he is fighting with Josh first underneath the basket. If you just watch those two, they are consistently going at it. And right now they're going at it down low as first has to send it away and it's stolen away. Now in transition, the Spartans, Jamison at the rim. Shot's no good, but a foul will send him to the line. And this is something Will Jamison is so good at. He is so good at drawing contact on those layups. Just making me wonder a little bit why earlier he didn't just try to go up for the layup and get to the free throw line, but now he is back here at the free throw line. He's a 74% free throw shooter on a bit of a cold streak right now from the line. But started the season, he started his first seven games 86%. Definitely a great free throw shooter. As he does knock down that first free throw. The foul on the shot was called on Isaac Smith of the Braves. That's going to be his first personal, second on the Braves overall. as there's going to be some substitutions as we see three starters for the Spartans go to the bench as John Parent, Nick Gallagher, and Jake Shermershine all check in. This is something you see a lot from Coach Johnson. He loves to play the eight-man floor, go three deep in his lineups. It's complete opposite for Blackhawk Christian. And Pickett got a good look in the mid-range there. Could not get it to drop, though. Now Parent outside. It's a very guard-heavy lineup right now for the Spartans with four guards, four three-point shooters, and then Grant Leeper, the solo big underneath. Look for them to just try to control the clock pretty much for the rest of the quarter and get those starters some rest on the bench. How about Grant Leeper there? Taking the contact from Josh first, finishing, plus the foul. A chance for a three-point play for Grant Leeper here. Here is the three earlier from Kyron Kapowiki. They're waiting to see him get hot. He made that three early to start the game, has been relatively quiet since. The free throw no good for Leeper. As the bucket got the Spartans at one point lead. There's now a long rebound, saved by Sefton, but ends up in the hands of the Spartans. Now under a minute left in this first quarter. Been a back and forth battle just like we expected. You can just tell these are two teams of high quali quality. The way that they're following their defender on for both defenses and just the way that they pass the ball is just different from other high schools that you see. And now the Spartans looking like they will just hold for the last shot here. And if I had to guess, they're going to try to run an option to Kyron Kapowiki. He's the guy you want to make the last shot or Grant Leeper underneath to try to get Spartans a three-point lead. It's going to be one of those two guys, though. And now under 10 seconds left, you see Kapowiki getting the screen, attacking the mid-range, a floater, no good. And now three seconds left, first. Sends it out to Sefton, and at the buzzer, it will not count. And that is now a 9-8 Homestead Spartans lead here. As we are going to be sending it down to our sideline reporter, Noah Lance. Thanks, Noah. And Matt Roth may be a first-year head coach at Blackhawk right now, but he is by no means new to the game of basketball. Roth spent four years at IU where he played 95 games and started seven games his freshman year. In those four years, Roth scored 453 points and shot 42% from three. He also holds the season single record for best field goal percentage at 59.2% in his 11-12 year. Now he's doing really well as his first year as a head coach, starting 12-1 at Blackhawk, but this is his biggest test by far up to this point, and so far he's got his team well in shape. Thank you, Noah, and it has certainly been very interesting to or hear about Matt Roth's college career at Indiana University. And it's so cool to see a guy stay within his state. Not only he played for Indiana, he played all four years for the Hoosiers, had a, role, a nice role his freshman through senior year, 
and then keeping it in the state, coming here, coaching Blackhawk Christian now, and leading this program to a lot of success already in his first year. Yeah, he has had a great year as a head coach so far this season as the Braves sit at a 12-1 record. Now st starting off this second quarter of action, the Spartans will have possession here. Gallagher, who had a nice seven points in the last outing for the Spartans. Someone who averages just 2.6 a game. Now Parent out to Gallagher, and that one just went out of bounds. Some miscommunication and a turnover there. And Will James is going to come into the game this time for John Parent, make, who just made that mistake. We'll see how long Coach Johnson keeps Alex Graber and Tucker Day on the bench. Of course, Tucker Day not exactly at 100% health right now, coming off of that foot injury. Definitely going to need a little bit more rest than he normally would in this game or for the next couple of games, but still probably going to have a very important role to be played. Yeah, as it gets late into this one, Tucker Day certainly wants to be out on that floor as first with a nice reverse there to finish strong. His first points of the night. It's a little surprising to see first finally just now scoring his first points. He's played a huge impact on Blackhawk all season long, playing a big impact, especially in their scoring course. He's also faced with one of his toughest, toughest matchups of the season going up against Grant Leeper. Yeah, both of these teams have some talented bigs down low, and that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch all night long. But as well, they do have those high-scoring guards like Gage Sefton, Kyron Kapowicki, and Will Jamison. As Kapowicki that time will get the ball tipped out of bounds, it will stay Spartan's ball. As Tucker Day checks back into the floor, or onto the court. And it looks like a little bit of controversy with who that went out on. They're going to say it was off of Kellen Pickett from Blackhawk Christian. I'm not really sure if that was the right call, but it, the ball will stay with the Spartans. Now with 6.30 left in this second quarter. Jamison attacking inside, and then Kellen Pickett gets a steal, and then Will Jamison whistled for a foul right away after it. Another frustration foul from Will Jamison, losing the ball, turning the ball over, and then just instantly creating a foul. That's his second. He's got to watch himself a little bit. He's such an important player for Homestead. He cannot afford to get into foul trouble. It definitely would hurt the Spartans if he got into foul trouble as the Spartans are now up to four team fouls. As Davidson couldn't get a floater to drop there. Now Kapowicki in the mid range trying to send it down to Day and it's stolen away. Now in transition. Pick it down low. Goes up strong against a double team. Can't get a fall, but then Sefton with the follow and the make. And that's where Sefton is so good. Just those putbacks, those little plays like that. Like I said earlier, he just finds ways to get buckets. And that right there, a very nice two, very heads up play from him. And with that, that gets Gage Sefton up to five points now on the night. As once again, Josh Burst getting his fingertips in the passing lane that time just sent the ball out of bounds Spartans will keep possession Kellen Pickett's wingspan is causing problems for Homestead right now already three passes that have tried to go underneath have been tipped out those passes usually go beyond outstretched arms of defender but, but Kellen Pickett the tallest player that Homestead's played against so far this year creating problems now Gallagher in the mid-range Trying to set something up as Day attacks inside. And that's a weight room bucket right there. Some strength down low from Tucker Day. And a nice hook shot. And you can see where Tucker Day has developed. His shooting from just outside the glass has improved so much. And then first wide open at the rim. Some defensive communication as you see Grant Leeper talking to Tucker Day after that one. A miscommunication between the Spartans. They thought they were going to do a switch, but you cannot leave Josh first open because any chance he gets, he's going to slam it down on your home crowd. 
And with that, Bucky, he's up to four points on the night, and the Blackhawk lead is up to three. As Jamison steps out of bounds there, that's a turnover. Braves gonna get the ball as we get a look at the Sefton dunk here. And another turnover for Will Jamison, and that's gonna get him sent to the bench. Some un very uncharacteristic errors for Will Jamison. Five turnovers already in this game, just not an impressive showing for the guard for the Spartans so far. And now first down low and went up and over Tucker Day there. A nice finish from Josh first. And after a slow first quarter, he's up to six points now, just four minutes in to the second quarter. And quietly, Blackhawk Christian has found themselves on an 8-0 run against this Spartan team. Leeper trying to size up down low. Could not get it to drop. And then it is going to be a foul called on the Braves. That one's going to be on Kellen Pickett. A little bit of anger being shown from the Spartans right now. So far, this game just has not gone the way that they've wanted to. And their point guard playing one of the worst games of his season so far. As Kapowicki couldn't get the three to drop in, Pickett cleans up the glass for the Braves. Sefton just pulling the trigger on a three ball splash. Don't give this man open space. He's going to hit the shot. He may only be a 26% three point shooter, but that's because most of his threes he takes are contested. He takes gutsy shots and right there, wide open that time. Grant Leeper doubled. Gallagher, a three ball, no good. Three minutes left in this game. It's starting to get a little bit out of hand for the Spartans. Expect Coach Johnson to take a timeout if Blackhawks scores another bucket before the Spartans do. The Braves have just been controlling this second quarter through and through. As first, over Leeper, no good. And Day cleans up the glass. The Spartans really need a bucket here to silence the Braves. And who are they going to go to? They've got two big guys underneath, but Blackhawks done a great job of keeping the ball out of their hands. Kyron Kalpawiki needs to find a way to get hot. He's only made one three in this game. It's the only scoring that he's done. As a three-pointer there, no good. And now an eight-point Blackhawk lead with a chance to extend it here. Muldoon out to in the corner, pick it. Three-pointer, no good. Now just two minutes left in this second quarter. The Spartans have not scored in a while here. Something Blackhawks doing a really good job of defensively is they're putting all the Spartan players in the same spot. They're trying to move around. They're trying to confuse the defense. But Blackhawk is holding strong and just not letting anything happen. Now a cross court past the Gallagher, a three ball long. Rebound brought in by Graber though. A big offensive rebound, but he couldn't convert. Rebound goes off of the Blackhawks, out of bounds. So the Spartans will have a third chance to score here on this possession. Alex Graber, very physical, and you see grabbing the rebound there, going up amongst the trees of Josh First and Kellen Pickett to grab that ball. Great effort there from Alex Graber and Spartans. Again, they need to score on this possession. They can't. They've got to get closer before halftime or else this game is just going to feel a little bit lost. And now Graber trying to attack inside. Kapuwiki out on the wing. 90 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Spartans have really struggled offensively in this one. As you see a steal from Aiden Muldoon. In transition, he goes up to the rim, misses, but Pickett follows with a slam. And now a 10-point Blackhawk Christian lead. And Anthony, right now, are you a little surprised Coach Chris Johnson hasn't called a timeout? I am a little bit surprised, but I guess he's trying to hold out for the halftime, saving his speech to the players for when they go into the locker room because I'm sure that speech isn't going to be pretty, and he doesn't want the spectators sitting behind to hear a single word of it as it's now a 10-point deficit for the Spartans. 
40 seconds left in the first. Blackhawk has been chasing a win against the Homestead Spartans for four years now. Make it five. And it looks like they're going to go to the halftime with a nice lead. And what's even more impressive is that they've held the Spartans to 11 points. Yeah, if you thought in the first half just 32 points would be put up, knowing the normal pace of each of these squads, you would think the Spartans would be favored. But they have absolutely struggled, as we now have less than 10 seconds left. Kapowicki trying to create. Sermershine in the corner, a three ball long. Rebound to Pickett of the Braves. Now to Muldoon. Down low, and that will bring us to the end of this first half of action. As it is a 21 to 11 Homestead Spartan lead. As this squad played a strong first half, or the Braves played a strong first half of action, as we will now be sending it. Actually, we will, we will be sending it to a break here as the Blackhawk Braves lead by 10. What limits you? Too small, too old, insecure, broken. You have no limits. Rethink your limits. Marco's Pizza, located at 10345 Illinois Road, inside the shops of Scott Road. Marco specializes in pizza, subs, and more. Order online at marcos.com or by phone at 625-6800. Thank you, Marcos, for supporting the Point 91 FM and being a proud sponsor of Homestead Media's athletics coverage. You don't plan on getting an injury, so why should you plan ahead to care for one? At Orthostat, you don't have to. Whether you get hurt on the job or on the field, or if you're experiencing sudden localized pain, we fix the unexpected. Our walk-in clinics provide emergency access to a full range of diagnostic, non-surgical, and surgical treatments. And the best part is there's never an appointment or referral needed. So you can get in, get out, and get going. Orthostat is recognized by Anthem and other insurance plans as an alternative to the ER. This is the OPS Halftime Report. 
Welcome live to the court of Homestead Arena. Here, no, I'm Noah Lands, joined alongside Braxton Hall. And what a first half right there by the Braves. They got out to a big lead, and they never looked back in that first half. They're up by 10 right now going into half. Yeah, right from the start, the Braves just seized momentum in this ballgame. We've seen several massive dunks from them, a couple of big three-pointers, too, that's really gotten them this big lead. Yeah, the defense really led to a lot of those big dunks, and we're going to be taking a look at our stats right now. But like you mentioned, those dunks, that really got big momentum changes over to the Braves. The Spartans scored two points in that second quarter where the Braves scored 13. Yeah, anytime the Spartans seem to get close in this game, we saw Blackhawk making some sort of big play, whether that be a dunk, three-pointer, turnover, great pass to seize momentum right back. Now you all see on your screen there, Spartans just getting dominated from the field, shooting 22% in that first half, whereas Blackhawk 47%. So just a big difference there. And then also Spartans had eight turnovers, whereas Blackhawk only had two. Those were the main two points where Blackhawk dominated. Yeah, and the Spartans, a team we usually see a lot, hit a lot of threes throughout the year, only making one three-pointer, going one of eight from three-point range for an 18% rate. Even in the turnover battle, for, or excuse me, even in the rebound battle for both teams, but that turnover battle, the Spartans with eight turnovers, a big part of their trailing right now. And one of the Spartans' leading scorers could not get into rhythm at all. Will Jamison really struggled in that first half, had two points and two fouls. Yeah, Will Jamison, he actually was out of the game there for a little bit. Coach Johnson pulled him because of those two fouls. He could never get going in this game. And as we've talked about all season long, this Spartans team is hot when Kyron Kalpawiki and Will Jamison are hot. And now we're going to be taking a look at some area news right now as Grant Leaper, our very own, you've seen him out here a few times tonight, but he has been racking up the offers left and right for football, not just a basketball player. He stepped onto the football field for the first time this year, and, I mean, you cannot teach 6'7". Yeah, Grant Leaper, obviously he's had a great basketball season up to this point, but he's had an even better football season, receiving several offers, like you just mentioned, being a great tight end for that Spartans team. Yeah, currently right now he's got offers from Eastern Michigan, Iowa, and Army, among others. He just went to Army for his official visit. But it's really going to be interesting to see where he ends up, as you see on your screen there, a list of the offers for him. At this point, we expect him to go play football in college, but you never know as he's still out here on the hardwood. And now we're going to move to our next news from the local area where nine girls basketball teams are ranked in the Sagarin Top 25 right now. It's just crazy to see how many good teams there are in the local area. Yeah, we've seen some great girls basketball game throughout this season all over the state, but especially here in Northeast Indiana where there's just so much top talent. Yeah, there is. You've got the Spartans here, but just within the SAC, there's so many solid teams. You've got the Spartans, Northrop, Carroll, Snyder. All four of those teams are in the top 25 of Sagarin right now, but you've also got other teams in the area like Huntington North is in there. You've got Norwell. Columbia City is having a great year, as you see on your screen now. The nine teams over here, Belmont and Warsaw also in that top nine. Yeah, and the thing about all of these teams is any one of them could win their conference, could win their sectional, have a chance at making a big run into the postseason. All of these teams are just so talented. Yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see how these teams match up, and especially with the our sectional for the Homestead Spartans. They've got Columbia City in there. A lot more talent than there has been in years past. It's really going to be interesting to see how that shapes out. Yeah, it's going to be a great, great way to see how they finish the rest of the season. It is, and now we're going to go to our third topic for area news, and it is transfers. We saw big transfers this last offseason for football in the SAC. It's going to be interesting to see what else we see for transfers. Yeah, we've seen so many players transferring a lot more in the past, and I think overall it's good for the games of both football and basketball. We're getting more balanced teams, and we're getting greater competitions and conference chases. Yeah, we saw one of those transfers lead a team to the state championship just in the SAC. It's going to be interesting to see how the rest 
of the transfers wind up these next few years, both in basketball and football. And going into the second half now for this game right here, what do you think the Spartans need to do to get themselves back into it? The Spartans have got to come out of the locker room swinging. They've got to get a couple threes, a couple easy layups, something going for this team to get some momentum going in their favor. We'll see if they're able to do that. And with that, that's going to conclude our halftime show. But stay tuned for second half. The Blackhawk Christian Braves lead 21 to 11 on the Homestead Spartans. Amazing. Marcos, pizza lovers get it. Welcome back to Spartan Arena here as the Blackhawk Christian Braves and Homestead Spartans are facing off at Homestead High School as Blackhawk is leading this game 21 to 11 at the half. And Homestead's got to find a way to come back in this one. And honestly, I don't think there's a doubt that they will. This game, it just has to be good. There have been great players playing this game over the last three years. Of course, Luke Goody from Illinois and Fletcher Lawyer and Caleb First from Purdue, who you have to assume are watching this game right now. Those great players didn't leave and go off to college just to come back and watch this game be a blowout. It's going to be a close one down to the finish. We just have to see what the Spartans will do to come back. And Coach Johnson, in his tenure with the Spartans, 405 wins. He's a coach that knows how to get it done and has great halftime adjustments. And we're going to see what he did in the locker room here to change it up in this second half. It'll be interesting to see what he does, what he said to his team at halftime. Certainly, I would not have liked to be in the locker room at halftime as he's known for setting the record straight in the locker room. But we'll see if it is successful. That is going to be a foul called on the Homestead Spartans, Alex Graber. Not a, a good start, actually, for the Spartans. Two blocked shots, but a foul by Graber. As now the Braves, a 10-point lead from their first half of action, trying to hold on to it. Davidson attacking inside, and he scores. Now it's the Spartans, Will Jamison. Struggled in the first half of action, trying to get it going in the second half. His Spartans trailing by 12. Day attacking the basket, can't finish. Pickett had enough to alter that shot. When 6-8 is in your face, it really makes it shooting hard. It really does. Just Tucker Day, not an optimal shot putting up. Left that one short, just barely grazing the rim. Now Josh first down low on Leeper. He went up strong and drew the foul. That's going to be Grant Leeper's second personal. After picking up a foul in the first few moments of this ball game, Leeper has done a nice job of avoiding foul trouble until that one. 
And Homestead's defense has done their job. It hasn't even been the defense that's the problem. They've held a very high-scoring team to just a few points. It's just been the offense, the turnovers, eight turnovers in this game for the Spartans to Blackhawks only two. And they're just not finishing at the basket as well. Just things Homestead needs to improve on. And first missed both at the line there. A 79% shooter on the season. A bit of a surprise to see him miss both. As the Spartans now trailing by 12 points. After a eight point first quarter, or excuse me, a nine point first quarter, they have only scored two points since. They need something to get going offensively as Tucker, Tucker Day tries to get it going and he gets fouled at the rim. We'll go to the line for two. And that's what he was trying to do last time. Tucker Day he was trying to draw that contact on first, but first time he wasn't able to do it, second time he was. Now he gets to go to the line to shoot two, but where he hopes to improve from last year. Last year only a 33% free throw shooter. And not a good first attempt of the season there. Yeah, not a good first attempt as the Spartans need each and every point here. Tucker Day goes 0 for there at the line. Still a 12 point Blackhawk lead. And how about this Braves defense allowing the Spartans to score only two points since the end of the first quarter. They've just done a phenomenal job. They've sniffed out everything that Coach Johnson has wanted to do with his offense. It looks like Homestead's offense is a little bit new. It looks like they're just trying to fit into a shoe that doesn't fit right now with Tucker Day in that offense, two bigs, and just Blackhawk Christian doing a phenomenal job of not letting them get comfortable. And then that's going to be a full court foul for first there. And those are just decisions that will upset head coaches, as I'm sure Matt Roth is not happy with that foul. He's definitely not happy with the foul, but it was it was a decent foul. He tried to steal the ball away from Tucker Day, who's had trouble handling the ball in this game. I see where the, the aggression to try to get the ball came from. Not a horrible foul, but not a great one either. As now it's the Spartan, Will Jameson. Down by 12, the Spartans are here. Day, once again, trying to get it going. Right at the rim, and he scores. So far, it's been clear that what Johnson was saying in the halftime is feed the bigs down low, as Tucker Day has gotten multiple good looks at the rim so far. And it's a miscue on the Spartan defense, a wide open pass to Josh first. Grant Leeper just caught on his heels. Blackhawk going step for step with Homestead in this half, not letting anything get close. Still holding on to a 12 point lead, the Braves are. But last possession, finally the Spartans seemingly removed a lid that was on the basket for almost two and a half court or one and a half quarters. Second foul that time on Kellen Pickett. That puts Pickett and first both with two fouls each, both the big men for Blackhawk Christian. If Homestead could strike a third foul on either one of those big guys, that could be huge, both offensively, offensively and defensively. Yeah, those bigs have been aggressive for the Braves all game long as Tucker Day with another shot right at the rim. The Spartans working down low in this second half. Day quickly becoming the leading score for the Spartans in this ball game with six. Other Spartans that you'd expect to show up or produce more have been relatively quiet so far. As Isaac Smith drills a huge three from downtown, he is their dead eye shooter, shooting 43% on the year from downtown. And that's a big one from him, putting the lead back up to 13 points. Practically silent in this game, but that three, just every time it feels like Homestead's starting to get momentum, Blackhawk Christian attacks back. And now Leeper at the rim. He can't get it to go. Good def defensive effort from the Braves as Pickett attacking inside and finishes over the stretched out arms of Tucker Day. And whatever adjustments Coach Johnson made at halftime, they're not working right now. He wanted to stick with the same defense, but right now Blackhawk has just a type of energy that Homestead doesn't on the right end. Yeah, at this point, Need something that can energize this Spartan squad as they're now being doubled up here, 30 to 15. 
And even though it's been Blackhawk domination so far in this half, watch the foul count because that is already the fourth team foul on Blackhawk. They are not a very deep team. So that's, that's going to be the second foul on Gage Sefton, leaving three Blackhawk players with two fouls each. Normally they do a great job of staying out of foul trouble. But the Spartans picking up some contact in this half. That might be their get out. As Jameson now finding himself with a mid-range look, but cannot get it a fall. Defense kind of getting lucky there as Jameson, when he's open like that, normally a deadly shooter. Just cold, cold, cold for the Spartans. A bit of a heat check there from Isaac Smith, taking a very deep three. And then a foul will be called on the rebound there. That one is going to be on Will Jameson. That's already going to be his third personal. And just, again, this continues with a just horrible performance from Will Jameson so far. Two points, three fouls, and five turnovers in this ball game. We've seen him play better. We know he's one of the best players in the 2-6-0 area, just not his best game. Jimmy Davidson got a lob attempt tipped away. Now the Spartans trying to move quickly. Jameson attacking and a nice reverse layup finish. And that might be the bucket the Spartans need and Will Jameson needs to get things going. A big timeout. I like the timeout call from Coach Johnson. It's going to be a full timeout, but much needed. Yeah, they need this timeout here as it is a 30 to 17 point deficit as you get another look at that nice finish from Will Jameson, who's really struggled early on in this one. But that bucket right there might be what gets him going as he now is up to four points on the night. Up to four points, but he's going to need more playing with three fouls too. And there are three fouls that shouldn't have happened as well. Just Will Jameson not playing his best, but he's one of those streaky players that you know can just turn it on eventually. So volatile as a player he create he makes a bunch of mistakes but normally he comes back and he makes up for them plus more and we'll see if he can do that same tonight as the spartans trail by 13. yeah there have been a couple games this season where J where will jameson has struggled early on but then later in the game he's been able to get it going and really just taking over for the homestead spartans but one thing the spartans really haven't seen that much of this season is really adversity. They're down 13 points right now. You saw when they played against Munster, they did suffer a large deficit in that game, and they fell in that one. Really, outside of that game, the Spartans have not faced adversity like this, and it's going to be a, two, a true testament of their grit in this one. Yeah, and the only games I can really think of where they faced adversity was when they were down at halftime against Bishop Lewers. They came out in the third quarter shooting like crazy. And then versus HSC, when they needed 22 points to advance to the Holiday Tournament Championship, they trailed by eight short of 22, and they battled back. But that also was just a game where HSC wasn't really playing 100% in. As Pickett now attacking strong to the basket, he's fouled and will go to the line for two as that is going to be Tucker Day's second foul. And Tucker Day, who's played a phenomenal half so far, picking up his second. Not a huge deal for Coach Johnson as Homestead is a little bit more deep. That free throw goes in for Kellen Pickett, brings Blackhawk up to 60% on the night. Not a great free throw shooting night for both teams, both shooting below their average. And Pickett gets both to drop. And the lead's up to 15 now, and Pickett is up to nine. The Spartans need some points on a lot of possessions here as they're trailing by 15. The time is sort of starting to run thin, just 10 minutes left in this ball game, and they have to outscore Blackhawk by 15 points. It has been an offensive struggle for the Spartans so far in this one. And they are going to need to find some offense here as Jameson can't get the three ball to go. And Davidson now with it for the Braves. First, backing down inside, and then he's going to be called for the travel as Grant Leeper and Gallagher came in there with a double team and first turned it over. Tucker Day is going to head to the sideline for Alex Graber. It's going to be a bit of a loss for the Spartans, not one that they want. Look for Homestead now to just attack the bigs underneath. Will Jameson, he took a 
a wild desperation shot on that last possession, but watch for him to try to get himself open, drive to the basket, and draw a foul on one of those bigs to try to get either first or pick it eliminated or sent to the bench in this game. And now the Spartans offensively just over a minute remaining in this third quarter. Needs something. Jamison, a mid-range shot, no good. But a nice offensive rebound from Gallagher. Now Graber. Spartans struggling on this possession to find an open look. As Gallagher guarded by the six foot eight picket. Spartans have got to pick up the pace here. And right there, Kyron Kapowicki tries to, and he can't finish at the rim. As now a three ball in the corner from the man, Isaac Smith. His second three of the quarter, and now it's an 18, brave, 18 point Braves lead. Just complete utter domination from Blackhawk. They haven't had to produce much offensively, but when they've had the ball, they've done their job. And now in the corner, Graber for three. That one's no good. The rebound brought in by the Braves. First, over to Davidson who can't finish at the rim. And then the rebound is controlled by the Spartans. But then Kaupuiki will be called for a travel. With just over 12 seconds left, the Braves gonna have a chance to extend the lead to 20 or more points. And just the Spartan crowd is shell-shocked. They came to this game, expected by many to win and now just staring in the face of a potential 20-point deficit. As Graber and Gallagher combine for that steal. Now over to Jameson. He finishes strong at the rim. And that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of action as Will Jameson wraps it up with six points. We'll take a break, but be right back with Homestead Blackhawk fourth quarter action. You don't plan on getting an injury, so why should you plan ahead to care for one? At Orthostat, you don't have to. Whether you get hurt on the job or on the field, or if you're experiencing sudden localized pain, we fix the unexpected. Our walk-in clinics provide emergency access to a full range of diagnostic, non-surgical, and surgical treatments. And the best part is, there's never an appointment or referral needed. So you can get in, get out, and get going. Orthostat is recognized by Anthem and other insurance plans as an alternative to the ER. And welcome back to Homestead Blackhawk basketball here as we will now send it down to our sideline reporter, Noah Lance. Thank you, Noah. And two years ago, these two teams played here at Homestead High School. However, things have changed a lot in two years. Two years ago, that matchup fit had three Big Ten players, Caleb first for the Braves, and then the Spartans, of course, had Fletcher Lawyer and Luke Goody. This gym we are in here did not even exist two years ago. Now, Homestead won that game by 12. We're back here, new gym, new teams, and the Braves got a big lead going into the fourth. Thank you, Noah, and the Braves have absolutely been dominating this ball game. Up 16, the Spartans in need of a miracle fourth quarter here. Completely different look from that game two years ago. This one very low scoring and defensively dominated. That, last, that one was just pure offense, pure talent with those three Big Ten players. And Grant Leeper finishes strong at the rim to start off this fourth quarter as the Spartans look to be a, applying a full court pressure here. As Kapowicki picks up Sefton all the way down and then is called for a foul here. Kyron Kapowicki, he's allowed to play that aggressive defense because he's got quite a few fouls to give. That's only his first foul. I think Johnson knows that. He knows Graber's only playing with one foul as well, and even Gallagher with zero. The, look for those to be your main guys to just pressure like crazy. And now outside, Davidson put his hand out telling his team, let's slow it down. Up 14 points, seven minutes left. Take as much time as possible. As Smith pulls the trigger on another triple and another mate. Smith now with three triples in the second half, and he's up to nine. Playing an amazing game. He is known for hitting those big shots, and tonight, just any ounce of momentum the Spartans feel like they have just fading away. 
Now Jamison on the attack, goes strong to the rim and draws the foul right at the basket. And that's going to be the third foul on Kellen Pickett. We'll see what Coach Roth does. My guess, fourth quarter, leading by 17. It doesn't hurt too much. He's going to leave Pickett in the game. Pickett has played such a phenomenal game despite picking up the three fouls. Nine points for him tonight and so many important and key rebounds. And really overall, the five guys who have been out there for the Blackhawk Braves have been playing great basketball. As you see the three-point shooting on the night, one for 10 from the three-point line for the Spartans. They have struggled from beyond the arc. And that's not an area they normally struggle a whole lot in their 39% three-point shooting team, which is pretty good. As right there, you see Smith missed the corner three-pointer. He's been hot all, hot all night, but couldn't hit that one. I think the key to Blackhawk success, too, is they are face guarding Kyron Kalpwicki. He has not had many good three-point opportunities. And then Jamison once again attacking the basket and draws another foul. This time, it is going to be the third on Josh First. You see Josh First just going up, not going up straight up, jumping in to Jamison's body. I said this was going to happen, and Jamison must have read my mind. He is attacking those bigs underneath just those last two possessions. Two fouls. And Will Jameson, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, really started off the season as a great free throw shooter, but the last couple of games has been in a little bit of a slump as he does get that second one to fall. Lead cut down just to 14 now. Holmes said that a comeback here would just be beyond miraculous. And if they were able to come back in this one, it would really just be completely flipping, flipping the script on what this game has been so far as the Spartans have just gone through a complete offensive struggle. They would have to just go lights out offensively and defensively to come back. And it starts there, a good forcing Blackhawk to call a timeout, but it doesn't make that much of an impact. Blackhawk with a bunch of timeouts to give. Timeouts left to use. And another key storyline in this fourth quarter right now is with 6.24 left in the ball game. Both of these teams are at 16 fouls, which means for the rest of the way, whenever somebody gets fouled, they're going to walk to the free throw line and take some free, free throws. That's going to be very important because the Spartans, they like kind of like to be in this position because late game, if they need to foul, if they need to play the foul game, they don't have any more fouls left to give. It actually favors Homestead, I'd say, because now you can have Will Jamison and Kyron Kalbwiggy, your main ball handers, handlers, play very aggressive and try to draw that contact to win this game at the free throw line. We'll see what Coach Johnson has sold his team. Likely with the way that the shots have been falling or not falling for the Spartans tonight, that might be the only way. And now Gallagher with the steal ends up in the hands of Kalbwiggy. Gets it back over to Gallagher. Jamison in the mid-range, and he's just short on that one. Rebound hauled in by Gage Sefton. And then he's fouled hard there by Leeper. Going to ground, Leeper just throwing his whole tight end body. And that's going to be a one and one. You see Leeper just put a little bit too much contact on the shoulder. And now it's going to be free throws for Gage Sefton, an 80% free throw shooter. Yeah, the best free throw shooter on the season coming into the game for the Braves at the line here for a one and one. As he makes the front end and will get a second attempt. Such a solid game for Blackhawk Christian defensively. Just picking the pockets of every single Spartan pass, getting a hand on it, forcing so many turnovers. And that second free throw drops as well. Gage Sefton with that free throw gets into double digits now with 10 points. He's the first Brave to get into double digits here as they're up to 40 points. How about this balanced attack all night long for Blackhawk Christian? It's just, it's been amazing to see Blackhawk Christian, what they've been able to accomplish. They're, it's used to being a more balanced attack but tonight, just an extraordinary show being put on by Matt Roth's guys. 
as Parent fades away. Couldn't get that one to drop in. It's getting late for the Spartans right now. Down by 16. No momentum whatsoever. It's looking like the first game for Blackhawk Christian at the new Spartan Arena is going to go their way right now. Just over five minutes left, an 18-point game. Everything in the favor of the Braves. The Braves now up 18 after that last bucket. That one was from Jimmy Davidson, who's now up to six points on the night. Gallagher for three, no good. And the rebound's brought in by first. This just is the continuation of a struggle by the Spartans to shoot the three ball. No shots falling from beyond the arc tonight for the Spartans, and that's just the difference. You see Kyron Kalpawiki only with three points. It was a three-pointer he made in the opening of this game. Since then, no scoring at all for the Spartans' leading score. Yeah, it has been so impressive, the ability of the Braves' defense all night long to just completely shut down the Spartans all around. I mean, all year long, we've seen Kyron Kaukowiki and Will Jamison just tear up some elite defenses, but that is not the story here tonight. As first with some checking, second chance opportunity points there. Picking and first, just making it look so easy out there. And then Jamison just flying into the rim a little too fast there and sends a pass out of bounds. And it's interesting to see that we haven't seen much of Tucker Day in a while. He's only sitting at three fouls right now. But Coach Johnson not electing to put his man back in. So he'll call a timeout. And we will take a break with them too as the Braves lead the Spartans 44 to 24. Welcome back to Spartan Arena here as the Blackhawk Braves have been dominating this ball game now up by 20 with 404 left in the game. Tucker Day is back in the game for the Spartans. We'll see how that affects their offensive attack if it does at all. As outside the Braves just going to be looking to milk clock at this point with a 20 point lead. Just want to remove as much time as possible off the clock to secure this victory. And that's what they're doing right now. Just dribbling around, passing around, no need to score. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Will Jamison. Just again, letting the emotions get to him, getting desperation. You know, Will Jamison, I've talked to him personally. He takes a lot of pride in defending his home turf so certainly a lot of frustration going on in his head he's done what he needs to for the Spartans from the in terms of getting to the free throw line but just the small mental mistakes have been what cost Homestead and Isaac Smith knocking down that first free throw now gets the third Blackhawk Christian player into double digits on the night as Smith first and Sefton are all there Pick it close with nine points, and then Davidson, the other starter, with six. As Pickett clears the glass on that miss. One for 12 now from beyond the arc for the Spartans. In the one other loss they had this year versus Munster, they went 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. Didn't make a single three. Tonight, it's the exact same story, just with one more make. And the Spartans... And the Braves this time turn it over, just losing the ball there. And that's a hidden thing, too, that it's 
been so important to the Blackhawk Christian Braves in this game and all season long. They don't turn the ball over very much. They don't allow for those points in transition, something that Homestead always takes advantage of. And tonight, it's just been the same story. Kapowiki trying to get inside, can't finish there. And once again, you saw Pickett clear the glass. And really, the Spartans overall all night long have been bothered by the size from the Braves with Kellen Pickett standing at 6'8 and Josh First standing at 6'6 and the shortest starter on this lineup, Jimmy David Davidson, at 6'3. And that's going to be a problem come postseason time for the Spartans. They don't have to play this Blackhawk Christian team again, but they are going to have to face against some of those Indianapolis schools that certainly have a lot of size to their name. Just not a good showing for Homestead. But again, this is, this is the first game for the Spartans that's going to be played at full capacity as a hard foul on Kyron Kalpawiki. A very, just a very hard foul on Kalpawiki. And they're actually not going to call a foul on that one as both players were going for the ball there. It's going to be Spartans' ball off of the Braves. And overall, right now, as the Braves lead this one by 20 with the lead most likely to hold, what a win this is for the Blackhawk Braves. And Matt Ross, first year as head coach for this squad, getting this win over the Homestead Spartans. They haven't beat this team since 2018 when Blackhawk got a 55-52 to W over the Homestead Spartans. And that's the only win in the eight matchups coming into tonight between these two schools. It's a big win for the Braves and a big momentum builder for their season. It's such a huge win for the Braves, too. They've been looking for that signature win. Yes, they had a very nice win over Northside to start the year and a very nice win over Concordia just last week. But Homestead, the Homestead Spartans, a blue blood program in Northeast Indiana, the number six team in the class of 4A. Now, that is a signature win, and I think people around the state are really going to realize what this Blackhawk team is all about because it's not just about how they handled Homestead, how they beat them by 20. It's the fact that they held the Spartans to 27 points, just showing their defensive effort, which continue, continuously, game in, game out, has just been so impressive, and to do it against a sizable team like Homestead is incredibly impressive. And what's been even more impressive is coming into this game, we were thinking if it was going to go the Braves' way, it would be a high-scoring fair, as they have just been a great offensive squad throughout this entire season, scoring 68 points per game and allowing 55 a game. But right now, it was completely defensive. The Braves weren't even playing their style of basketball, but they were still able to dominate this game. And against teams that have performed amazingly defensively, Homestead has had their struggles. Munster was a great defensive team, and they shut out Homestead. They didn't let them get any easy shots, and Blackhawk Christian did the same. Both teams seem to have the exact same strategy of shutting down Kyron Kalpawiki. Don't let Will Jameson get an open shot, and you'll succeed. And that has proven true again versus Blackhawk Christian tonight. And now we are going to get a substitution timeout as the bench is clear here. And the starters for the Braves getting a standing ovation. Very well deserved. What a night for Blackhawk Christian. What a night for their fans too. A huge win. The students certainly excited about this win. They know that they've lost the homestead the last four years. They know that this has just been a needle in their side. And now they can celebrate knowing that they are the best team in the 260 area. As Muldone kicks it out into the corner, a Kelly three and a Kelly triple splashes in. So much to cheer for if you're a Braves fan right now. Just excitement after excitement. Everything's going your way, and you've got more coming your way. A 24-point victory for the Blackhawk Christian Braves in this one. What a win for the Braves program. And they just destroyed Homestead. You can't put it any other way. They took Homestead's offense. They took it apart. They took every single little piece of it and said, no, you can't get this. What a night for Blackhawk Christian. 
And let's just talk about the reload that Blackhawk Christian has had. Everyone thought that they were going to fall apart two years ago. They didn't. Everyone thought that this year was going to be a repeat of last year, a bit of a down year. They didn't. They played amazing, and tonight they get their signature win. And now we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter who's alongside Josh Fersh. Thanks, Noah. And Josh, it's been five years since you all beat Homestead. How does it feel to break the streak? You know, we, we just got to treat every game just like any other game, and we just got to come out and compete the best we can, and we did that tonight, and we just worked our hardest. This is the first year for Coach Roth. How has he made an impact ever since he came in? You know, every coach is a little bit different, but uh, he's a great coach, and we just got to listen to what he says, and if we come out and compete every game, we're just going to get it done. And you, are, you all are on a quest for another 2A state title. You came here, played a big school like Homestead. How does that help you on your way to that quest? You know, Homestead's a great team, uh, but again, we just got to treat it like any other game, and that's a long ways away, and we just got to look forward to lures on Saturday. Thanks, Josh, and good here. Noah, back to you. And thank you, Noah, as we, as we just witnessed a huge win for the Blackhawk Christian Braves in this one. It was just an amazing game, and a, the signature win, like we've been saying, for Matt Roth. Of course, a former IU player, he knows intense competition. With this game expected, was expected to be intense. It was supposed to be the area game of the year. And Blackhawk came into Spartan Arena and just said, no thanks, we're gonna do things our way. Yeah, these are the two best teams in the area. We knew that coming into this one. Homestead ranked number six in the state. But Blackhawk upsets the Spartans in a dominant fashion. And at this point, there is without a doubt in my mind that Blackhawk is not only the, the best 2A school in the entire state, but one of the best teams overall, regardless of class, in the entire state of Indiana. They proved tonight that they can use their size and lock up other teams with significant size. And with that, we'll wrap it up here from the booth, but stay tuned as we will have the OPS postgame report for you after these short messages. Marco's Pizza, located at 10345 Illinois Road, inside the shops of Scott Road. Marco specializes in pizza, subs, and more. Order online at marcos.com or by phone at 625-6800. Thank you, Marcos, for supporting the Point 91 FM and being a proud sponsor of Homestead Media's athletics coverage. Welcome back to Spartan Arena as the Spartans just lost by 24 points in this one. It was a 27 to 51 point game going into half. Spartans trailed 11 to 21 against Blackhawk. Blackhawk extended that lead by another 14 points at the end of this one. Yeah, this game was really competitive after a quarter of play. Really from that point on, Blackhawk absolutely dominated, especially in the second half. The Spartans offense just can never get anything going. 
Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They scored nine points in that first quarter. The Spartans did two in the second. After that, the second half, they just could not really get anything going as we're going to take a look at our stats now. In that first half, it was really all Blackhawk with the stats. They were shooting a lot better. They didn't have as many turnovers, and a lot of it is the same as you can see there. The Spartans only improved by 4% from the field as Blackhawk also improved, shooting over 50% from the field, over 40% from three is just crazy to see. And then Spartans had eight more turnovers. Yeah, and in this game, Blackhawk really beat Homestead at their own game. Homestead made one three-pointer the entire contest. We've seen them make several three-pointers all season long, only shooting 8% from behind the arc, and then an abysmal 26% from the field. Yeah, it's just really crazy to look at those stats. We've seen Homestead have some tough games throughout this year. They've struggled when they probably shouldn't have, but this one, they just struggled, and it was struggling against a really good team in 2A, and Blackhawk proved that they can hang with anyone. Yeah, and if you're another team in 2A right now, you've got to be scared out of your shorts. This Blackhawk team could win, two, the, win, it, win the 2A title easily. Yes, they definitely could with that. And just with a complete dominant performance here by Blackhawk, and the Spartans struggling offensively and defensively. Do you have any final thoughts, Braxton? I would say for the Spartans, you have got to bounce back before that game at Snyder on Friday. Try to figure out your offense before then. And then for Blackhawk, just keep doing what you did in this game. An absolutely dominant performance, and that's the reason they only have one loss so far this season. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one on Friday at Snyder. Boys and girls doubleheader starts at 6 p.m. You can listen on 91.1 WCYT. Dot org. That's going to be a fun one, so be sure to tune in. And with that, this is going to wrap up our, our broadcast here. Thanks to Switcher, Joel McChesney, producer Trevor Newhouse, all of our camera operators, Noah Joe Hanningsmeyer, and Anthony Gary up in the booth. I'm Noah Lance alongside Braxton Hall saying so long and have a good night.